All right, welcome back to another session of Pellet Tech 101. I have a Harman Accenture Free sitting right here. Uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how we replace the combustion blower, uh, also referred to as a, an exhaust fan or a draft motor. But I'm going to show you how we go ahead and replace that combustion blower inside of a Harman stove. Majority of Harman fireplaces, freestanding stoves, furnaces, boilers, uh, they're all pretty much going to have the same combustion fan. Uh, configuration may be a little bit different, but uh, hopefully this video is helpful, give you some tips and tricks uh, when the time comes where you need to replace that combustion blower uh, and being able to do it on your own. All right. So the first thing that we want to do when we're replacing the combustion blower is we want to remove the combustion fan paddle or the impeller blade. Um, so again, right here, I'm working with an Accenture freestanding. We've gone ahead and we've removed the cast iron heat exchange panels. Uh, and then we removed the combustion cover plate right here, which I just did in a previous video. Uh, so you can check that out if you need to uh, learn how to be able to remove that properly. But once we have those items removed, it's going to expose the fan paddle. Uh, Harman Accenture Freestanding here, I believe, uses a 5-inch single paddle. Uh, you will notice variances with that, depending on the, uh, the make and the, and the model and the manufacture date of, of the Harman. Uh, some use a 4 and 3 quarters, some use a 5-inch double paddle, um, but uh, very similar overall. Um, the fan paddle right here uh, is tightened down on the flat edge of the combustion fan shaft uh, with an Allen set screw. You'll need an 8-inch Allen wrench, so a standard eighth inch Allen wrench is what you're going to need. And a lot of times those are really stuck on there. So with this one in particular, I let it soak for about a, eh, about an hour or so with WD-40 uh, to be able to, to kind of bust that Allen screw loose. Uh, sometimes I've seen folks that have to let it soak and sit for a full day. Uh, I've also seen circumstances where folks need to use like a pencil torch to heat that up to be able to crack that Allen screw. So uh, it can be a little difficult, but those, those tips right there can be helpful in the removal. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold the, hold the fan blade with one side. Grab my Allen wrench here. We're going to go ahead and loosen that up. And pull this fan paddle off of that combustion shaft. We don't need to pull the Allen screw all the way out. We just need to loosen it up. Give it a little wheel, and that impeller wheel will come right off there like that. All right, now that we have that combustion fan paddle off there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn around the stove so that we can access the combustion motor and just kind of show you best practices on how we pull that motor out and put the motor back in. All right, we have the stove turned around here. Gives us a nice viewpoint of our combustion blower or our exhaust fan. Again, a lot of times when you're working back here, A, we want to make sure that the unit is fully unplugged from the wall. B, a lot of times giving ourselves a little bit more space to work on it uh, can actually save us quite a bit of time. Now, one nice thing with the, uh, with the Harman is they have this quick disconnect exhaust hub right here. So uh, a lot of cases, folks will leave their venting fully siliconed. Uh, they will remove those three bolts right there. I believe those are three eighths and be able to uh, allow the stove to be pulled away from the wall, allotting a little bit more room back here to do some work. Again, we have three nuts right here that are holding on our, our combustion blower. We've already taken off that front fan paddle. Those are 11 32nd nuts. Uh, you can use a socket and a ratchet if you need to uh, initially kind of uh, break them loose. Uh, but for the most part, we want to use a nut driver on these. So we have just a kind of a, a shallow well right here. Um, and we kind of are going to tilt that at an angle so that we don't lose those nuts or accidentally have them fall in the distribution fan there. So I'm just going to take these out one at a time. And then I will generally tilt the nut driver back a little bit like that, just to kind of scoop the nut up within the nut driver. Set that off to the side. Next one. side and then our one up on the top. All right, great. Three nuts are out. Our motor is fully loose now. Uh, before we proceed with pulling the motor all the way out, I want to disconnect the electrical of the motor so we can get everything out in one shot. So we, as we follow this wire up, we have a couple of zip ties in a couple key places that we're going to want to snip off. 
main one right there. I think that went into the fan, so we'll have to double check that fan. Uh, sometimes it can be good when we're working in here like this, even to put a covering over the fins of the distribution blower or pull the distribution blower out altogether. As I said, if a nut falls or a zip tie falls, sometimes it can fall right in the fan, uh, in the, in the fan fins right here and create more of a problem. So again, sometimes it can be a good move to, uh, you know, to lay a little drop cloth over there, or just fully pull out that distribution blower. And let's see here. We have our green right here going to our ground. So we're going to release that. I have one more zip tie here I need to snip. There we go. Well, we've got another little zip tie here. We'll get snipped. like that and then now uh, we've got black and white goes to a red so black to the red and white to the white and a lot of times these connectors are tight so I'm just going to use two pliers right here and pull those apart and we'll grab our white and white right there so our combustion Wires now free. I'm just gonna move this over to the other side. And again, it will be important that when we put this motor back in, that we tie those wires up so that we don't want it, you know, obviously resting on the exhaust, that kind of thing, even though they are thermal wires. Uh, very important that we keep those zip tied properly and out of place. So now that we have all of our electrical off, I'm just gonna slowly pull out this combustion fan here. As you'll see, it has a, a mount plate right here, and we also have a gasket. Now, I know that there's variances on this depending on the year and the model uh, Harman that you have. But this particular one, we also have a gasket in there. So I am going to uh, fish that out, make sure that that gasket looks good. We'll just, we'll just grab an Allen wrench. I just want to get a a bite on this gasket there we go so we have a, a round fiberglass or a lyotherm gasket right here this seems pretty intact however if the one that you're pulling out does does not seem intact then this is definitely something that we're going to want to replace right here is going to be that gasket right now this one is looking good i don't see any notable signs of wear we're going to go ahead and place that right back in just like that all right and then as you Get your new motor again we're just going to put these few things back in place get that plate back in there just like that we get our new motor here gonna run the shaft right through the center and again we do want to oops, so we do want to pay attention to where the electrical where that electrical is right there you know as far as our our three stud mount Again, we want this to wrap up over the top. Like that, you see if I put it on this way, the cord right here is rubbing against that fan blade. That's no good, All right? So, your positioning as you're putting this back in here is going to be very important. Right there, it's actually hitting that exhaust. So, that basically leaves us one way that that combustion fan can go back in there where it's not obstructing the fan and where I can properly run the electrical wire over the top of that exhaust fan. So while I'm just holding it here with my finger, I am going to get our nut driver ready. And what I like to do is I like to just physically take the nut and I drop it right inside that nut driver you're going to kind of come in a little bit of an angle and get that thread started on there. With it recessed like that, it's almost impossible to get it threaded with your fingers. So again, nut driver is going to be your best option here. We've got that one set. We're going to drop the next nut in. Get that threaded. Okay. 
And then the last one right here. Pop that in right over there. Good. I'm just going to go ahead and crank it down. There really isn't a need to crank down the nuts here for the combustion motor. I just give it a nice little turn. Just like that. We're good to go. Again, I want to take this wire and I want to run it back over the top right here. Like that. Pull the wires down. First one I'm going to get in place is this main one right up top here. All right, so I got this last zip tie and I got it really nice and tight up on here. Again, we want to get that as tight as possible to keep the cord off of that exhaust manifold right there. Um, I'm just going to snip the excess right there. And again, now uh, before we zip tie the rest of it right here, I do want to go ahead and I want to connect those electrical leads again. So we're going to go ahead again, our green is our ground and that goes on the spade right there directly to the unit. And again, we have our black and our white. We're going to find those lead wires right here that we pull that off. So again, we had white to white. So push that in, make sure it's nice and tight. Same thing here, we can use our pliers if we want to, we need them, I should say. And then that red to black right here. And those feel nice and tight in there. I'm going to go ahead right here and I'm just going to run one more zip tie, tie that up. One more zip tie, tie that up. Uh, and from there, I'm going to close up the back. We'll spin the stove back around uh, so that you guys are able to see the, um, the final placement of that fan paddle on that front side. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to place the fan paddle impeller back in place on here. Again, a lot of times the, uh, the existing fan paddle impeller is still in decent shape. Uh, we always just want to kind of inspect that, look at it. Uh, but as long as this thing is in full of crud or isn't uh, bent or warped in any way, there's no reason why we can't use that same fan paddle uh, once we put a new combustion fan in there. Again, the key is we have an Allen set screw right here, as I mentioned before, that's an eighth inch standard Allen wrench. And that is going to lock down on the flat edge of the combustion blower shaft. So that's our most important thing right here is to take a look that we're lining up that Allen set bolt with the flat edge of the shaft. And then also the placement of it. So as we, as we initially slide this on right here, as you can see, I can go way back and I can go way front. Uh, I guess, you know, as we, uh, as we look at things here, generally speaking, we want to have this very close where it's kind of flush with the edge. Maybe the combustion fan shaft just protruding maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so right there uh, is, is generally speaking going to be best placement as we put this fan paddle uh, back in place. We do not want to have it shoved all the way back and we definitely don't want it half hanging off right there. So again, we're just going to line up that Allen set screw. Have about a sixteenth of an inch of that combustion shaft sticking out. And we are just simply going to tighten this back down. Again, I do not need to refund this. I'm just snugging it up here. Okay. In the event you need to take it back off, it's going to make it a lot easier for you. So that's it. We'll finish this up. I'll just show you uh, the combustion uh, baffle plate going back in. We'll put the heat exchangers back in just so you can see that, that whole process here. So, first I have the baffle, and like I showed you in the video before, we want to have that left side going all the way into that corner first so we can pivot that in without struggling with it or busting up our knuckles. Once we have it in place, we have these two ear latches on either side. Now our combustion baffle is in place. We're going to take our heat exchanger baffles. Again, I kind of feed these from the top and down. Those two little ears go right into the combustion baffle plate. And I just have two upper ears right here. One on the right side and one on the left side. Just like that. And that is the replacement of a Harman combustion fan or exhaust blower. Uh, any questions, uh, need any further assistance, anything specific about your model, leave us a comment in the video here below. We're always happy to help. And we thank you again for joining us for another session of Pellet Tech 101. We'll see you soon.